Door Mail, home of a great night's sleep. Oh, no, you'll be fine. Once you're on stage, once you're on stage, and where are we tonight, Sherry? We're at the Duchess Theatre, everybody, in the West End of London. Be there. Oh, it's our be first there. live show ever, which is why I'm so frightened. And I don't know if I'll recognise Sherry and Harriet with their legs, because I've only ever seen them from this part That's of very it. true. Oh, yes. <laughs> Goodness me. Apparently, they've got dear. fabulous legs. <laughs> yes, anyway, we have. Who's coming in, Dee? Right, we have got somebody very, very special. And everyone will know who he is. He's done so many amazing things. He was a comedian, an actor, and I mean, so talented. The amazing John Thompson. Oh. <laughs> John, how Hello. are you, darling? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well, Good. enjoying this weather. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. It's fabulous, isn't it? I know. Well, I, I, you and I, Doug, we're going to talk about your incredible career today. Oh, but really? I just wanted to say that you and I have got a secret <laughs> connection, haven't we, darling? Well, I, I, I am a huge fan of your parents' work. Uh, oh, thank uh, you. I grew up with it. And um, um, I, obviously Thunderbirds was, was one of the bigger ones. Um, uh, Captain Scarlet. I knew a man that looked like he ran Cine City Cinema in Didsbury, right? And he worked <laughs> in the projection room, and he 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 basically lived in there. And he looked like Captain Black. <laughs> I don't think he ever saw daylight. He had these white skin, dark circles on his eyes, and piercing blue eyes. And he, <laughs> Kev, the the projector man, he was. The, he, I'm sure he was. Mod, Captain Black was modelled on him. I was going to say. Do you think that's where they got the inspiration? Quite possibly. Quite yeah. possibly. And, and also, you, your favourite yes. was... Yes, a bit when rare, I said a rare one. It was. And it was called... The Secret Service. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm a huge Stanley Unwin fan. And he, oh, well, for those that yeah. don't know, Professor Stanley Unwin created his own language. So if yeah. something was great, good, it would be deep joy. And uh, if something was bad, it would be folly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just only a snippet of, of his <laughs> of his genius. I mean, I, I I can't speak it. I would love to be able to just you know, but he played a vicar with a man Matthew who could miniaturize himself into a briefcase. So the vicar was a kind of like he was an agent, that, but it was Stanley Unwin with and he <laughs> used his mad language. And inside was Mini Matthew who could shrink down and, and he'd open the suitcase and he would sort things out you know it was, yeah. it was just so unique a show yeah well, that's quite rare that but i admitted to debbie the time a bit of a geek now i tend to, I, I like comics and, and and doctor who well the older doctor not so much the new one when i, when I was yeah. doctor who so i'm an I, i'm a bit of a geek about those kind of fantasy type shows star wars i love star trek all that but the, a geek is someone a, a geek in a fairground is someone who can eat anything and you know, oh. a geek would be someone they go, you give him nuts and bolts and he could eat them. Oh. Yeah. Live and he could eat. Absolutely. So, what it is, a geek is, is someone who eats all this stuff and it goes in. So, but I'm a James Bond nerd. So. Oh, are oh. you? Yeah. So, uh, it, it, that's my chosen specialized. I was on Mastermind. I did James Bond villains and I got 14 and no passes. So, I was quite proud of that. Oh. Fantastic. Well, well I have to introduce you, Diane, to our friend Barbara Broccoli. Who's oh. a really big, you know, family friend? Who my, is absolutely fabulous. Have you met her? No, it was my dream to be a Bond villain uh, of oh. some sort. I mean, not a major one, but I mean, I, I would love to be seen for it. So, <laughs> oh, I think you'd be perfect, darling. Yeah, yeah, that'd be. I would love that. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we'll have to get you to come to Pinewood and meet her when she's there. That, I'd yes, love, I'd love that. Well, my I, I know Pinewood very well. But I remember it was a little Tudor. Century box with a yeah. thing that went up. Oh, do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, when I was a kid, my dad worked for BTR, British Tire and Rubber, and he was based in Watford. And we went around Black Park and, and, and all around there. And, yes. they went there. and when, when I lived in Watford in the 70s, in, only in the summer, they were filming One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing. And there, was a <laughs> dino, there was a brontosaurus skeleton with a tarpaulin driving around Watford. <laughs> And I did a quiz show with Bernard Breslau. He went, yeah, I was in that. He said, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
I went. I I said I was a little boy when that was being filmed. It's mad. So yeah, I know. Oh, nice. quite well. They're all, but that whole area, Elstree as well. It's all this bit of a mm, melting. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we we we've got some hot news, haven't we? About hot news about cold feet. That's good. Well, we. I wish I had. <laughs> so, um, we we would we we would you to do a special. So it was kind of left very open ended. And in 2020, that's last year, we were going to do a kind of National Lampoon's European vacation a la cold feet <laughs> in Barcelona. Oh, wow. Uh, with all the crew. Um, so a little bit of a jolly, which is lovely. And uh, um, yeah, so we all kind of merged because my son's band's touring and Jimmy and Hermione are, are, are off on in the VW camper. And so it all tied together. And lo and behold. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the obvious struck. So we don't yeah. know. It's on the back burner at the moment. I have not heard any, I've not heard the C word, which is cancelled. So um, I, fingers crossed, that's what will come I, back. I with. mean, it must, to me, it was always like the English version of Friends. I always had that same feeling about it. Um, what did you think of the Friends reunion, the way I that was done? It. I watched it. I did. Yeah. Watch, yeah. It was, uh, um, it was, I thought they were going to do an episode. Yeah, everybody did. Everybody, I thought they were going to do a special. Ep. I was a bit. Yeah. Really? I mean, some interesting insight, you know, that uh, Jenny Aniston and and, and uh, uh, yeah David Thingy, they were actually had a, they they really liked each other in real life, but never really did anything about it, you know. Uh, interesting how Jennifer Aniston referred to Brad Pitt as the Pit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the show. Not you the know. pits. Yeah, no, the I pit. mean, cold feet. I mean, the beginning. The, I mean, having followed it from the very beginning, and mm. I think it's been it's been lovely. But your character, the way he's evolved, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, it's good because the normally it was a bit of a kind of you know a, a bit of a jester in the show, you know. But uh, me and Jimmy were a bit of a double act, you know. And then when we came back, uh, they kind of like trusted me as a more you know as an actor. But people go, "Have you ever thought of doing straight acting?" I went, "Well, cold feet is light and shade." Yeah. You know, a lot of things yeah. I've done are kind of, you know, like a comic undertones, but sometimes, but when we, we came up with a depression storyline, I was very grateful for that because, um, it, you know, it was, it, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit of a change for me. And, um, but it was based on the writer, Mike Bullen. He, he, he struggled. And, and um, so it was very important for me, knowing that, to make it as truthful as possible uh, to, to, to kind of be, you know, to do, do it justice for Mike. You know, and uh, it's I beautiful. That's that scene where we're going to jump off the, the, oh, the rock. Oh, that whole episode was quite <laughs> quite something, really. Yeah, it really was. I mean, yeah. yeah. So two questions were asked <laughs> about the episode. It went, "Is that you playing drums?" I went, "Yes," because I've been <laughs> playing for thirty eight years, and I'm, I've always played. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yes, I was taught <laughs> properly. So I mean, I meet actors who said the drummers, and I, I there's a kit there, and I go, "Oh, sticks." Go on, have a go, and they go. Uh, I said, Do you play? and they went, "Oh yeah, I play." And they go, and they get on the kit and go, and I look at them and go, "No, you know." <laughs> really. Darling, can I just say we just did a lovely episode of Midsummer Murders and, and had a laugh, but I was very impressed with your devotion to your health at that time. There's a reason for that, Harriet. By the way, I'm enjoying your food. Uh, you, 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 I enjoyed your summer pudding. Uh, Thank the, you, darling. Well, sort of, Not many of, people have said that for a long time. I love time. cooking. <laughs> I'm obsessed with food. Which I is know. sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing, really. But, yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm absolutely... Uh, I, I just love trying new things. And uh, my latest gadget in the kitchen is a Ninja Air Fryer. And, oh, my God. Oh. It's a, something, something else, really. It's amazing. It'll, it'll reignite your love of frozen food because you just come <laughs> in. I kind of go, oh, I don't want that. And, 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 anyway, tell so me. that's my latest gadget. And um, tell me about your devotion to oh, health when cool. I met you. We went for a wardrobe yeah. in, and uh, she she said, Can you come to us in Bath? And I went, I live in Manchester. No. Anyway, bless this woman. They saw, the driver drove her up with all these costumes. But the problem with telly today is there's so many middle, so much middle management. It's like, it, it was just like unbelievable. It was like birds so, in the back of a car. Costume, darling. Yeah. I tried it on. And uh, it, I could get into my regular <laughs> that I quoted. So I went, okay. 
And uh, that day I went on the paleo diet, which for those who don't know is kind of a caveman diet. So if you can forage for it or hunt it, you can eat it. So it's meat, what? no dairy. Yeah. No dairy. It was devastating because you know how wonderful catering is yeah. and the excitement of the day is yeah. when you have lunch breaks or tea time. Or, and I remember saying to you, come on darling, it's lunch. You went, no. I was like, what? No. I'm on the paleo. I was like, oh, I for have, Well, I could have lunch, but I, it would be chicken and cabbage. And it was very chicken. limited. <laughs> It was limited. It the the street that I had in the in, waiting in my dressing room was a naked bar, and it was like it's a pressed fruit like fish <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I had dried figs and dried mango and cashews. I could have those because so you can forage those. That's the caveman thing. So yeah, but I, it, it dropped off me. It did it work. Did. It was just yeah. sacrifice. That's all it is. And it it's, worked. Uh, but John, but John, it's very farty <laughs> food. That isn't it. Hashtag wind. Not so much. The, it's heavy protein. I worked All with you, right. I like to say. The, no, the, I worked with you. The fibrous kind of thing is a bit, you can have veg, but you can't have um, carb veg. It's wow. the veg. Okay. Veg wind. Yeah. <laughs> so potatoes, I work potatoes with you. are no kind of thing, aren't they? Sweet no. potatoes are allowed. Potatoes. Sweet are potatoes. Are ordinary potatoes. Did cavemen have ordinary potatoes? No. no, no, and they <laughs> no. Don't, darling. They don't, no, no pastry or bread no. because they, didn't, they, 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 they weren't arable farmers. Mm -mm. Oh, so are you still doing animals. it now, John? No, I am not. Oh. No, but I'm just kind of <laughs> less greedy. Are, just... are you wearing any trousers, darling? Uh, it sounds to me like you're not. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> uh, I actually put a posh pair on to feel better on the on the Zoom. There you go. I'm just get my pajamas on. Go on. I just think it's a. I, I don't feel it's a commitment. Then you know that. No whole, commitment. Whole all right. No it's Carl Lagerfeld says, once you're in sweatpants, it's all over. And I'll let me close. Well, finished. The day's gone. <laughs> Your life's like over. Yeah, yeah. I love, I, I listen to you on Bargain Loving Brits. Yes. Um, it's, I, it's <laughs> the recent one. So I've, this is the lineage of the show. It was Bargain Loving Brits in Benidorm originally. It was. Now, I seem to be the voice of Benidorm because before that I was Benidorm ER. You and were? The, that was the private hospital in Benidorm. Yeah. Then I did uh, Bargain Loving with Bricks in Benidorm, and then the production said, well, we, let, we need to go a little further afield. We need to do Bargain Loving Bricks on the Costa del Sol. Now, yeah. some of the Costa del Sol, as you will know, is very expensive. So there's yes. not many bargains to be had in Port Puerto <laughs> Puce. So they kind of, they kind of, it's like, I think they got a bit stuck with Benidorm, but they did find, you know, it, it, basically, uh, <laughs> they find these huge caravan parks and I remember one episode where the, the scousers went, he goes, it's only 300 quid a week, you know, 300 quid, that's all. He went, he goes, but without air conditioning, it, it's a bit of a killer at night. And I'm thinking, no AC in, Sp in Spain in the summer. That's right. I just thought, how do you cope? No wonder it's 300 <laughs> quid a week. I loved it when you went to the, um, to the markets or the auctions. Oh, <laughs> but the time what bargain there seems to be a, a running theme is two um two um two drag queens uh re get a rescue dog and we visit yeah. the lady say we're show up short on funds and they put on a drag <laughs> show to raise funds for the animal sanctuary that seems to be the running theme in yes i've the been to those i've been to those when Have you we been were to doing Benny Dorm, yeah you know it we first used, and sherry don't you yeah i used we used to go to that one uh the, for the dogs you know yeah. raising funds for the dogs but you do <laughs> make me laugh because what you do you, you have such a funny way of talking it's all it's scripted but it's not some of it's have, not some of it's not but I've got to be careful because sometimes I'll do stuff like the one show. We just sit back here on deck in all I can uh, enjoy view, you know. And the view was a ploughed field, and I went. <laughs> she went and enjoy view, and I went <laughs> a ploughed field. Yes. <laughs> so they went. Oh, I don't think we can keep it in, John. Why? Well, I went a little mean spirited. <laughs> mean spirited, John. <laughs> I, I, I do do ad libs, yeah. But it's oh, quite nice funny. when you do that thing where they they, they, they they have a conversation, they go, they don't know what to say, they go, and how much did it cost? She goes, oh, okay. and then in the gap, I go, come on. And it's like I'm having a conversation. I know. Person. You I really do it like brilliantly. Do. So the last one was Bargain Loving Brits by the Sea, which <laughs> yes. is, was in the UK. So we had Scarborough, Skeggy, 
and good old Blackpool. I watched it. Yeah, but it's just the gift that keeps giving. But it's great oh, when it's you find wonderful. a rich character like the joke shop owner that drove a sea high yes. through the town. <laughs> it, oh. <laughs> oh my god, it's the best thing on television for People me. People love it. It's a Sunday, early Sunday night, you know, school night, and everything. Oh, brilliant. I get loads brilliant. of really lovely comments about it. But we had the best time in Panto, didn't we, you and I? We did. I was Abanaza and Sherry was the genie of the ring. And we used to sit, uh, we no, no. We used to sit on the, some stairs by the side of the stage and we had to watch it go. I mean, I mean yeah. we did have a good time, though. Yeah. We did Halfway have a good time. through, though, I always go under. I'm like, oh, really? Two yeah. shows a day. Two a day, yeah. I mean, when you can do it in your sleep, <laughs> you get into kind of um, yeah. autopilot. It's not, that's not, not really so bad, you know, it seems to fly. But then when you've had, for me, it's the audiences. I love to perform and I'd rather be on doing stuff. Yeah. But if it's a school, you know, at the start, they do the school. Yes, the screaming. All, all the yeah. jokes that, that are not, I know. Some, some are a bit risque, but they're never kind of too heavy. They're just so But cool. you did play drums. You did, did get your drum solo in. I sang, uh, you Sympathy did? for the Devil by the Rolling yeah. Stones because I was the baddie. Yeah. And uh, I, I, they brought a full uh, Latin percussion set out with timbales, cymbals, cowbell, and it was great. Oh, wow. It was great to see. You were brilliant. But I've got to, I've got to talk to you about Bush Baby. Ah. <laughs> now then, how did that happen? Well, I was Why asking... did it happen? And, ha and it ended brilliantly. Um, okay. So I was asked to do... Oh, okay. how you kept it secret for so long. Yeah, okay. everyone. So, the only people that knew were my agent, my partner, and my ex-wife. Because I couldn't <laughs> tell. I had to tell my ex-wife and partner because uh, my a my partner might have thought was having an affair. <laughs> my ex-wife would go, "What's he up to? Why is he not letting on what?" what yeah, of course. So the first time they asked me was the first year it went out. I was kind of thinking, quite. I'm quite fortunate that you know I'm a great believer in all things happen for a reason. You know, yeah. Uh, COVID wouldn't release me, even though it was an ITV show. You know, sometimes you think I'll get a bit of leeway because it's the same, you know, thing. But they, 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 they wouldn't release me. The only bonus of being in the first show is the costume that you could pick your animal. And I love, oh. I love monkeys, you see, and chimps and, and, and apes. And I said, oh, I want to be a monkey. And they went, okay, we'll, we'll do a monkey costume for you. But then they said they couldn't do it. Now, the second time uh, it came around, uh, I wasn't working. I, well, it's, I was desperate to work. And I went, yeah, all right, and I'll do it. I'll do it, okay. So I had a choice of three. One was an alien, these were in the show as well. So I had an, the alien, which was, I think was Mel B. Yes. Seahorse, which- Oh. Now they're quite feminine really. And I Very, thought- yeah. Right. So the idea of the show is to subterfuge, you know, is to guess you. If I had picked a feminine costume, I would have had to have kind of, you know, <laughs> Pinched on and, and and it was another dimension I didn't really need. Yeah. To kind of maintain yeah. a female presence. So people might have thought, well, it's a girl, you know, because they change your voice with the voice changing, you know. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, oh uh, my kids didn't know. And uh I the subterfuge I used for going to recordings was it was already earmarked that I was doing countdown uh, dictionary corner for a week. Well. If my kids knew this stuff, they'd have known that A, it's up the road at Media City from me, and B, yeah. uh, you do five in a day. So you take five shirts. So you do one, 15 minutes, put your new shirt on, they go, oh, yes. right, well, welcome back. And then at the end, they go, do you want to come back tomorrow? And they go, I'd love to. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and you just, 15 minutes, you go and have a quick vape and a coffee, and you're on. <laughs> so my kids thought it was that. Anyway, but the thing, um, you have to wear a, uh, a black ski mask uh, here, a, vi a, a balaclava thing, uh, a visor that came down over here. Oh my God. A sweatshirt with don't speak to me on it. Uh, and black gloves. Other contestants don't know who you are. You, none of no. you know who you are. That's no, all. no one knows who anybody is. Absolutely. You wow, that's amazing. Car. The driver's in on it, but he signed an end non-disclosure agreement. So he he knows, but um, you get there, and th the weird thing is you see people in costume and you go, oh, I wonder who it is. But also the entourage and the agents, they wear the visors and the masks and the things. Oh, no! 
<laughs> yeah, but when I was walking through the corridor, I'd see someone with a don't speak to me thing on and a visor, and I'd go, like, because it's, com- I'll, I'll admit now, it's probably one of the loneliest hostels oh, yeah. I've ever done because you are locked in your dressing room without a TV or anything, and the, the runners know who you are, and they just take your dinner orders, and you, 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 you're not allowed to leave there. You're not allowed to wander about. Oh, it's, no. a huge, um, it's, it's a huge kind of old aerodrome in Hemel. Hempstead, do you know that studio? I think they do no. dance on the ice there. So you're, you're in there all day, but you can hear other people practicing. So you're sort of guessing and you're not sure. But the weird thing is when they do like this, like, a group thing where you all come on and you're like, there's like a robin and a, and a dragon. And a, and a, <laughs> it's just the weirdest <laughs> thing. Did the you guess anybody? Is, Did you guess anybody right? Yeah, Lenny. I could tell from the voice. I could tell from his singing voice. I could hear his speaking voice in it. Now, my yeah. my kids n- knew from one. I did Delilah with Tom Jones. My kids knew that I was Bush Baby, and they they they, they went. I, they knew, and I had to keep going. Now, be ridiculous. When have I done this and all this? And I'm going. <laughs> kid, if you go on my Instagram account, you'll see my kids' reaction. I filmed it secretly when they take the mask off. I saw that, yeah. That's one of the best things about it. Yeah. Was yeah. It's reaction and, and and the surprise. Even though they kind of knew it, just, it just mm. put a full stop on it. You know, they were right. They were right. But yeah. Like, I did say one, I could hear someone warming up. <coughs> I said one is a professional black singer because uh, I heard them doing the scales and that. And I could tell that it was a soul voice. So, and that was Neo. He was the badger. So, ah. Yeah, yeah. But for the year before, everyone thought I was Hedgehog, who was Jason Hanford. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that was quite interesting to, for me to join the show. And then yeah. well, they said, would you do the Masked Dancer? And I said, oh, what? Masked Dancer? What next? The Masked Chef. <laughs> you know, the Masked Builder. Can you imagine? <laughs> it's... <laughs> You know what I mean? I thought the mass dancer, you don't go, I spot that pasa doble anywhere. <laughs> well, my, my son and my son in law is doing it in Sweden. He's a very big star in Sweden, but he's part of the panel. Okay. But what is interesting is that every time that's he the goes best out, bit, Debbie, that's the best yeah, bit when they're guessing and you're yeah. in the suit and you're like, oh. that's the best bit. Is she Dunak? Uh, yeah. One guess for me, all sorts. Uh, uh, Gina De Campo, they thought I was for a while. <laughs> no. Also, Matt Lucas, because of um, there's one clue that they did. Well, I went, uh, what's the, I? Why is that relevant to me? And the Bush Baby was whole. Uh, did a kind of because I do amateur magic because uh, um, I see Darren sometimes who wrote Birmingham yeah. Black, the Blackboard Magic thing. But and I'm not a professional magician, but I love magic and I do a bit. And there was a bit where I was doing the cups and balls, and I went, Da-da, and I produce a potato, and, I, and Matt did that song, Baked Potato, didn't oh, it? Right. And it was a real curveball because everyone went, it's Matt Lucas, Matt Lucas. And I thought, well, why is it relevant to me? Then I realized it was Len Spud. I was Len Spud, the billion, oh. in billionaire boy. So I didn't oh. even get my own clues. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Doug, what's next for you? Um, well, there's a there's an exciting project happening, and it's being filmed in Manchester. My old friend Reese Thomas and his his partner Lucy, who's a comedian and writer, have written a, a show called Dodger. And what it is, it's the it's Dodger and Fagin and the gang in London pre Oliver. Wow! Oh, Before wow. Oliver comes along, I thought, what a great premise that is! What a brilliant idea! Wow! Yeah, so I to play. Uh, uh, a, a dodgy farmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, I play a dodgy farmer. So that's great. I'm doing a little bit on that. So that's exciting. And um, I'll prob- I'm, I'm toying with the idea of a podcast as well. So Yes, so you should. Love to be yeah. Yeah. Wait, you can have us on your podcast. I would love yeah. to. There yeah. you go. That's genuine. Well, yeah, let's that's get that's it. That's right, yeah, you're we're in. Yeah. You're we always in. get jobs on this show. We got a series written for us. Tony McHale came on. And he wrote. He wrote us a series, Wonder Birds and the Dead Agent. We have Wonder Birds <laughs> Investigates. It's on currently. So there okay. you go. So we we get jobs constantly on here. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. I do you know I love the whole podcast thing because yeah. it's socialism working at its very best. 
Absolutely. I love that. It's just like, well, you do, I do it for people who, who, who aren't famous as well. I don't yeah. just do it for mates. They'll go, do you mind coming on? And I'll go, yeah, of course. You know, it only takes, mm-hmm. you know, a bit of your time. Yeah. Yeah. One, one leads to another and to another, and maybe eventually someone will monetize. But I, I, I love the way it's this kind of organic. Yeah. Uh, I'll help you out. Yeah, you help me out. Will you come on mine if I do one? Yeah, I will. I really like Perfect. that. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. That's what's happened over this lockdown. Things like I that. I like to think about. kindness has kind of uh, grown. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I'm, a, I'm on a WhatsApp group for my uh, road, uh, you know, because I, I didn't, wasn't sure. I was, in London, one thing I think, I thought people, when, when I lived in London, I, I, there was a little mistrust of neighbours. I didn't really know my neighbours when I lived in London. Yes. But here, yeah. I, I, since this has happened, everyone's out looking out for each other. And I really love yeah. it. Yeah. And we hope that's what this world has brought to us now after this terrible Let's time. Let's hope that so. sense of community yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Sharing yeah. Something. And everyone helping. John, you have been the best guest ever. Will you come back thank and you. see us? Thank, thank, well, thank you for being so lovely and having me on. It's I love fun. it. Pleasure. Pleasure. Nice to see you. F-A-B. Lovely to see you, darling. F-A-B. Thank you so much. F-A-B. Yeah. See you on the podcast. I'll see you. Take care. Thanks. Bye, Bye. 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 He was amazing. Oh, oh I fun. love him. Don't you? I he's just him. Yeah. So, he's so by the time our next show comes on, we'll have done our show. We yes, will. Yeah. I know. We can tell oh. everyone about it who couldn't make it, but yeah. we hope to see everyone that can get there tonight. It's going to be amazing. Your mail, home of a great night's sleep. Saparista want to take your taste buds on holiday. Treat yourself or someone special to the wonderful taste of the Mediterranean. Visit saparista.com for delicious tasting, authentic food and drink from small local artisans. Type wonderful in the checkout for a 20% discount.